Namibia has condemned Germany's backing of Israel against genocide charges at the International Court of Justice. It says, given Germany's colonial brutalities, that it should not support Israel. So what's behind this furious diplomatic dispute and why now? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the programme. I'm Adrian Finnegan. Namibia has fiercely criticised Germany for intervening in defence of Israel at the International Court of Justice. South Africa brought the case against Israel, accusing it of committing genocide in Gaza. Now, Germany wants to appear at the court to make a submission in support of Israel. Namibia condemned the move, pointing to Germany's own colonial-era genocide committed against its indigenous people. This is a story with many strands, showing how the past intertwines with our present world order. And we'll get to our guests in just a moment. But first, Uma Kulsum Sharif sets up our discussion. At the turn of the last century, Germany was the colonial ruler of what is present-day Namibia. Between 1904 and 1908, German forces killed more than 70,000 indigenous people. Some refer to it as the first genocide of the 20th century. In 2021, Berlin acknowledged committing genocide in Namibia. Now, in a scathing criticism against its former colonial ruler, Namibia has condemned Germany for supporting Israel against genocide charges made by South Africa at the International Court of Justice. In a statement posted online, Namibian President Hege Jingob urged Berlin to reconsider its decision to intervene as a third party in defense of Israel. Jingob says Germany is ignoring the deaths of more than 23,000 Palestinians and defending what he calls genocidal and gruesome acts of the Israeli government. The Namibian president says Germany has failed to learn lessons from its colonial past. Germany is trying to dodge because they know if South Africa succeeds in this case, so they, they, then, then the next is Germany, because we are, we, we are, we are going to to, to sue Germany. We are not finished with Germany. So our solidarity is also with the Palestinian civilian in Gaza and the Palestinian people because the, the, their land is occupied. While a colonial past overshadows Namibia's relation with Germany, the Holocaust has defined Berlin's ties with Israel. Since the war on Gaza began, the German government has increased its arms exports by tenfold. Deutschland steht an der Seite Israels. Germany stands by Israel's side. We will support the country and we support its right to self-defense. Namibia's president says Germany could not morally commit itself to the UN Convention Against Genocide while supporting what it calls the equivalent of a Holocaust and genocide in Gaza. The criticism comes as judges at The Hague are deliberating after a two-day public hearing on the accusations of genocide in Gaza. Israel has rejected the claims and declared its military operation in Gaza is in self-defense and to eliminate Hamas. Several countries, including Namibia, are now backing South Africa's case at The Hague. Umikulsum Sharif, Al Jazeera, for Inside Story. Let's bring in our guests for today from Namibia's capital. We're joined by Mutjinda Kajio, who is uh, the paramount chief of the Obahero Traditional Authority in Namibia. From Uppsala in Sweden, we're joined by Henning Melba from the Nordic Africa Institute. And from Heidelberg in Germany, Matthias Goldman, a senior research fellow at the Max Planck Institute with expertise on international law and Germany's colonial ruin in Africa. I welcome to you all. Let's start with you, uh, Matthias. Um, what do you make of Germany's intervention at the, the International Court of Justice? Um, shouldn't a country responsible for two genocides be actively looking to prevent a third? Absolutely, Adrian. I cannot agree more with you. Let's say that, legally speaking, it's not entirely surprising that Germany is making an intervention because, in all fairness, Germany has intervened in previous cases of genocide before the International Court of Justice, namely the case brought by Ukraine against Russia and the case brought by the Gambia 
against Myanmar. So um, there is some precedent for Germany intervening in genocide cases, and obviously due to Germany's history, um, there is a reason why it is uh, particularly concerned about that. But let me say that um, I found the way in which Germany announced its intention to intervene quite surprising, if not to say disappointing, because I think there are different ways in which you can uh, say that. And what I found particularly uh, 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 particularly problematic is the way that they framed South Africa's complaint as an instrumentalization of the International Court of Justice, uh, which means basically it thinks it's an illegitimate suit. It's something that should not happen. And after all, we've heard during the pleadings in the past days or in last week, uh, that is quite a strong statement. Therefore, I'm absolutely not surprised by the reaction on the uh, on the side of Namibia. Okay, let's uh, bring in uh, Mujinda uh, in Namibia's capital. What are we to make of the timing of Namibia's intervention here? Uh, can we see it as a, a genuine expression of solidarity with the people of Gaza? Uh, thank you for having me, Adrian. Um, Namibia's intervention is applaudable because uh, we had a long history of collaboration uh, with the uh, Palestinian Liberation Organization all the time through the times that uh, Jasser Parafat was the president. So the case that South Africa has launched is, is a case that Namibia as a whole supports. But it comes a bit of a surprise to, to, to us, the Ovaheiro people and the Nama people who have suffered uh, genocide at the hands of uh, Germany, that our president uh, is now accusing Germany of not to, of not uh, being in line with the with the genocide convention, while at the same time our government has sided with Germany uh, for violating the rights of uh, victims not to participate in the negotiations, for agreeing uh, with Germany that uh, Germany has not committed a genocide in Namibia, uh, for agreeing that uh, Germany must only pay um, money towards uh, uh, bilateral arrangement, uh, development aid programs to Namibia instead of paying reparations. So I think it's a bit hypocritic of uh, the president now to, to say, look, Germany must do the right thing, while in our own negotiations with Germany, we agreed not to do the right thing. Um, but Shinda, um were the Overhero traditional authority, or was the, the, the traditional authority actually consulted ahead of the, the, the president's in, intervention? Uh, and uh, what did your organization make of it? This latest intervention, we were not consulted at all. We, we, we read it in a, in a, in a social media. Uh, equally, we were also not consulted when our president uh, started to negotiate the German governments or to on the, the question of uh, Nama and Hero reparations. Okay, let's bring in uh, Henning. Uh, what did you make of uh, President uh, Geingob's intervention and his somewhat undiplomatic language? It indeed is very strong language, which is not in line with usual diplomacy. And I think it simply highlights the uh, offense the Namibians take, and President Geingob voiced in a rather blunt way the utter frustration which is existing in a majority of Namibians when they look at the German attitude, which they consider as arrogance, as hypocrisy, and moral double standards. <laughs> The Namibians were all the time confronted with a lecturing posing of Germany during the last years after Germany finally admitted that what happened at the beginning of the 20th century was in today's perspective a genocide, which is a reservation, meaning there is no legal relevance to what they admit has been committed. And they were always told, not least the agencies of the Ova Herero and the NAMA, and the chief can testify to that, that you cannot compare your case with the Holocaust. Yeah. 
And the reference was made to the singularity of the Holocaust, as if from the perspective of the Nama and the Ova Herero and the Damara and the San, the extermination strategy that was applied to them was not a singular experience. And I think that is something Germany, until the very day, despite the admission of guilt and remorse, has failed to understand. There is a total lack of empathy when it comes to the perspectives of the Namibians. And President Geingob voiced that frustration. Matthias, uh, you were nodding in agreement there. I can only underline what Henning Melber has just said. I think it's absolutely correct to state that Germans are underestimating what this causes to people elsewhere in the world, particularly to the victims and you know the descendants of the victims of past genocides, to see Germany in such a position right now and to see Germany lecture the world. There has been a lot of uh, diplomacy from Germany um, that tries, and I would say in some ways, at least sincerely, to break with the past and make a difference, in particular in relations to African countries, and, you know, to actually get to a status of a partnership at ice level. But all we heard in the past weeks has basically obliterated these efforts. I think you can restitute a lot of uh, looted art, a lot of human remains, or as many as you want, uh, if you don't follow up on that behavior uh, when it comes to uh, the suit brought by, Af by South Africa. And there have been many attempts that try to delegitimize the South African government, actually quite from the center of society, not only from the fringes, but also from, you know, from serious people in uh, positions of power. And that I find quite uh, uh, quite sad, actually. It, it it really means that many people haven't understood that the times of European imperialism are over. Chief, can you? I'll come back to you in just a moment. But but while we're, while I just want to pick up on this point with with Henning uh, once again. Has Germany ever offered a sincere apology for its actions in in Namibia? And and if not, I mean, where do, what are we to make of Germany's uncritical loyalty of of Israel? Well, you see, there the double standards enter the picture again. In 2015, the German government, more in passing, admitted that what happened at the beginning of the 20th century was a genocide. The spokesperson of the foreign ministry, in answering the question of a journalist, said, if you want to call it genocide, then call it genocide. And that triggered bilateral negotiations between the German and the Namibian government. And those negotiations were about the form of apology. So just imagine from the point of view of Namibians, there is the state that admits to have committed genocide and then starts, in the meantime, eight years of negotiations to reach a compromise in a draft joint declaration, how the apology is phrased. And the reason for that is that this is supposed to be a, an apology which has no legal implications. And it follows a slogan which already was issued 20 years ago by the then foreign minister, Joschka Fischer, who said, no apology which is relevant for reparations. The negotiations between Namibia and Germany were focused on the issue that Germany was desperate to avoid a precedence that the recognition of the genocide in Southwest Africa would be one that is legally relevant for reparations. And the term reparations is not mentioned in the joint declaration. So we are again back to square one when it comes to double standards. And just imagine, the reasoning is that the UN Genocide Convention was adopted after the genocide was committed in Southwest Africa. It refers to this principle of intertemporality, where they say you can't qualify it as a lock, stock and full genocide because that notion was not there. Now, just pause for a moment and imagine what would happen 
if with the same argument one would make reference as to the Holocaust as a genocide which was not in legal terms a genocide because it happened before the adoption of the Genocide Convention. This is the perspective and the point of view of Namibians, and the Germans simply don't get it. Chief Kachiwa, um, the joint declaration issued by the German and Namibian government says, Germany asks forgiveness for the sins of its forefathers and that the Namibian government and people accept Germany's apology. Why isn't that, along with the funds that Germany has agreed to pay, enough for the Herero and Nama communities? The apology, at first, the, the whole negotiations cannot take place between the Namibian state and German state. We have Hereros in Botswana and South Africa, the United States, United Kingdom and elsewhere. They are not part of that negotiations or they're not considered. And the apology is not to the Namibian nation. The apology must come to the victim communities who are the Hereros and Namas who has suffered systematically under the, the extermination orders that was issued. So our direct participation and carving what we need to resolve and how we come to a an answer, uh, it is, it's pivotal that we are involved. Therefore, uh, if it is only between two states, really it, it does not, it does not, it's not something that we shall uh, accept. Uh, Matthias, this case, uh, Namibia and Germany, underscores the challenges of writing historical injustices in ways uh, that are acceptable to and inclusive of the very people who, who were wronged. Uh, what are the implications of this for the people of Gaza? When it comes to the reparation of what needs to be restored, uh, before the, the, the genocidal activities of, uh, of, of Israel, they have to be directly involved. It's not go, it should not be an issue of the international community deciding uh, for the Palestinians uh, as to how they should be, uh, or how their needs should be addressed. Matthias, do, do you want to pick up on that? Yes, um, sure. So this is an interesting issue. Um, you know, at some point, uh, this war will over, war will be over, or we will come to the point where we have to talk about reparations. Uh, now, in the case of Gaza, I would include in that debate uh, issues of war crimes and crimes against humanity. I would not solely focus on genocide, because on substance, I'm not sure if we can actually talk about a genocide that is already happening. There are many factual issues. Many of them have been brought up at the court. Genocide is a crime that is very hard to prove because the intention to eliminate a people needs to come together with the facts. So someone needs to act in order to implement that intention. And that is quite difficult to prove. It is a very clear case in uh, with respect to Namibia, because there has been an order by General Lothar von Trotha ordering the elimination, and then he just did that. Uh, we don't have that clear a case in um, Gaza, but still there is the issue of war crimes, for example, using excessive violence, using um, starvation, or at least attempting to starve uh, the people. Uh, using um, insufficient care to distinguish between civilians and uh, combatants and so on and so on. And all of that could give rise but, to reparations. So I would but, broaden the view here. Yeah, Matthias, what about, what about the, you know, you have right-wing Israeli government ministers talking about, you know, bombing yeah. uh, Gaza into, mm -hmm. into obliteration. Surely, surely that's evidence. Absolutely. Of, uh, yeah. Absolutely. What, what that shows is an intention uh, to commit genocide or uh, maybe even incitement to genocide. But as I just said, you know, the people acting um, on the ground in Gaza, they need to, uh, for, to have the same intention. So what you need to do is you need to prove that there is basically a line of command between whichever person um, makes such a comment, uh, uh, calling for the obliteration of Gaza, and the person pulling the trigger or dropping the bomb. And that is very hard to prove, in particular, um, if much of that information depends on a military that, you know, you don't control, so to say. Let, let me put it in that way. Um, many of these issues have come up, and I'm not alone in, um, you know, 
sitting a little bit on the fence if that will actually be proven. But I, I, see, I see much better ground here for proving crimes of war and maybe even crimes against humanity. And that would in itself already give rise to reparation claims. Henning, do you want to come in on that? I think there is indeed a difference, which uh, following the comments now makes the point, as Matthias has stressed, um, the claim to commit genocide is very difficult and hard to prove. And in the past, also in the ICC, um, the court was very reluctant. It, it is a matter also of legal disputes. I'm sure Matthias knows much better than I do, where scholars actually feel the definition of genocide is rather unsuitable to be tested in the courts. What is much more suitable is war crimes and crimes against humanity. And it's much easier to follow that line <laughs> of argument, and we have a number of judgments where this was ruled that it were war crimes and crimes against humanity. So that is, that is indeed the distinction, which also means at the ICJ the case is pending. The very unfortunate thing and the reason why we are discussing it now is that Germany did a very ill-advised move on the 12th of January, on the day 120 years after the war between the Namibians and the Germans started culminating in genocide, proven genocide, issued a statement in absolute defense of Israel, and the same day didn't use a single word <laughs> to address the historical legacy at a time when the bilateral negotiations, as we are told, are about to be concluded in a joint declaration where, as the chief pointed out, Germany apologized to the Namibians. And the Namibian government has, if I'm very blunt, the audacity to accept an apology in that declaration without the Namibian people having been asked. The Ova Herero and the Nama and the Damara were not asked if they accept an apology. That is the context. Chief uh, Kachur, um, the agreement between Germany and Namibia was supposed to be a win-win for all. Germany would atone for its, its bloody crimes. Namibia would get much-needed funding. Why did protests break out <laughs> uh, when the agreement uh, was, was, was made? The agreement de deviated from what uh, the public expected, from a, a reparation package to a development uh, programs. And um, the, the money that was provided was very meager. Um, as a result, uh, most people did not like it. Uh, in our specific case, this agreement, uh, it's between Namibia and uh, the German state, exclude our people in Botswana, South Africa, and elsewhere. Therefore, to the Hereros and Namas, uh, since we were excluded from the beginning, this is something that we're never going to accept at all. And um, one must take note, in one of the clause it says, uh, that agreement, if signed as is, uh, will close any future discussions on the issue of genocide and reparations. So that closes the book. And Germany went on to say, look, they, they, what they have done is a gesture of goodwill. So it was not a reparation package, but a gesture of goodwill to the Namibian government. So really, it shows their uh, arrogance and their position of imposing to the Namibian state what they want uh, without really taking into account uh, the political situation or the needs of the people. Matthias, getting back to, to Germany's intervention at the, the ICJ, uh, what legal grounds does it have for that? So for any state party to the ICJ, it's possible to intervene in an ongoing dispute because, I mean, disputes only take place between parties, but as the ICJ is um, the most authoritative international court, it really affects all states because they might create a precedent. And so Germany is concerned about um, 
the um, interpretation of the genocide convention or it was concerned about that in the previous cases in which it intervened. So you could say, you know, on the face of it, it's not necessarily illegitimate to um, intervene in such a case. And as I said, it's quite a, a from, from the perspective of the genocide convention, it's quite a complicated case. While I, while I clearly see incitement to genocide and while I clearly see a risk or a threat of genocide, whether there is an actual commission of genocide is quite an, intrigue, an intricate uh, manner. And I would be very careful in jumping to a conclusion there. So there's good reasons to, um, you know, to make to make um, submissions for all states, actually. Um, the International Court of Justice has also the function a little bit of a forum for debating international law. There is no legislature in inter international law. There's only sporadic treaties. And I think that's an important function that the court can fill. So I think uh, as such, it's okay to intervene in a case. But the question is really, how do you do it? How do you frame it? Um, do you um, do it in a way that is, I think, disrespectful to South Africa? Uh, Heading, um, finally, uh, is this yet another example of the global south exposing the double <laughs> standards of, of the west, of the global north? I think it is, and it's uh, another piece in the puzzle of a global realignment we can witness since a few years. Uh, there are a number of reference points, and I wonder if President Geingob would have made a similar strong-worded statement two years ago. There are realignments. Countries of the so-called Global South select new partners. They are extremely frustrated that the lecturing of the hegemonic West continues, that the West tells them what is right and what is wrong. Meanwhile, they apply double standards all the time. I'm not saying that in those countries who are lectured are no double standards. Unfortunately, double standards seem to be an integral part of basically every country. But they are fed up and have enough of the West telling them what to do okay. and what not to do. They are repositioning. Okay. And there are new global actors with which they can align. OK. Many thanks indeed. I'm, so, I'm sorry to interrupt you there, uh, Henning, but we are out of time. Thank you, gentlemen. Chief Muchinda Kajiwa, uh, Henning Melba and Matthias Goldman. And um, thank you for watching. You can see the programme again at any time by going to the website at aljazeera.com. For further discussion, join us at our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can join the conversation on X, our handle there. Is that AJ Inside Story? From me, Adrian Finnegan, and the team here at Doha. We'll see you again. Bye for now.